Hello everyone and welcome back to another a very exciting chess game between Mikhail Tal and Laszlo Zabo. Mikhail Tal of course needs no introduction. Mikhail Tal is one of the greatest attacking chess grandmasters of all times, one of the most legendary chess players ever and his opponent Laszlo Zabo was a pretty strong chess player himself. He was nine times Hungarian chess champion and that was a record when he became nine-time Hungarian chess champion. Uh, he was a chess grandmaster from Hungary and this chess game happened in 1973. So let's see what happened in this chess game. Uh, this is absolutely an amazing and a very instructive chess game. So Mikhail Tal starts the game with pushing the e-pawn e4. We have g6 and bishop to g7. So black pushed the pawn. If developing the knight, white can push the e-pawn. Uh, so black didn't want to develop the pawn, uh, develop the knight in the king side. So this is why black is pushing the the pawn first. Just it looks like the king's Indian defense. So pushing the pawn by Mikhail Tal, and this is known as the Austrian attack. A6 knight to f3 and b5 bishop to d3. Developing the bishop, developing the queen. And then c5. So Zabo is attacking Mikhail Tal ambitiously. A very aggressive play by Zabo. So immediately expanding from the queen side. And basically, black is threatening to push the pawn and trapping the bishop. So the solution is actually very simple capturing, capturing, and then pushing the pawn. So making room for the bishop, as you can see. And it looks like developing this knight is a problem. So knight to c6, developing the knight, and Mikhail Tal is developing his bishop, but then knight to d4, knight is getting in and attacking the queen, and it looks like this knight is dangerous. And if a capturing the knight with the knight, then capturing back with the pawn and forking two pieces, and if capturing back with the bishop, that is going to lose the bishop, and black is going to have a pass a, a pawn on d4 so that doesn't look very attractive Mikhail Tal however in this position he captured the knight with the knight so black captured Mikhail Tal is challenging his opponent and what was the idea of Mikhail Tal was this a blunder well Tal is known for uh, his drinking habit maybe he drink a little bit too much before this game. Maybe that was the issue. <laughs> Maybe he was drunk. Well, of course, the solution is very simple. Mikhail Tal castled from the queen side. And if capturing one of these pieces, if capturing the bishop or the knight, then bishop takes on b5 with check and winning the queen. So this is why we have b4 attacking the knight, but simply knight to e4. Let's... Uh, demonstrate that on the board so in this position if capturing the bishop let's say then simply bishop takes on b5 and this is also a check and black is losing the queen so Mikhail Tal has a very active position and maybe we can say that the opening was a success for Mikhail Tal b4 knight to e4 developing the knight and Mikhail Tal played a very good move in this position what would you do that's of course. Bishop takes on d4 and if queen takes, bishop we still have this nasty discover attack to the queen, checking the king and winning the queen. So Tal was a crafty and a very aggressive chess player. Finally, Laszlo Zabo castled at move 14. They usually say that you should castle before move 10, until move 10. But chess grandmasters can sometimes delay castling, and this was one of those uh, one of those chess games. After castling from the king side, Tal played bishop to c5 and threatening some nasty discover attacks to the queen. Bishop to b5 is a very dangerous move, and it looks like bishop takes is very dangerous. So after bishop to b5, let's say moving the queen, then rook to d7, and it looks awful for black. As you can see, also, also targeting on e7. So this is why in this difficult position, Zabo played queen to a5. And maybe we can actually really can say that the opening was a success for Mikhail Tal. On the other hand, a black 
is a little bit more clunky, so this knight doesn't look very amazing, and the queen is running around, and white is very aggressive, and in this position, Zabo is targeting the a pawn. Mikhail Tal simply captured on e7, defending the rook, both the bishop and also the a pawn is under attack. So after defending the bishop, queen takes on a2 by Laszlo Zabo. And okay, so Tal played bishop takes on b4 and Tal has two extra pawns. But it looks like the king is not looking so safe, but the queen is also very aggressive. So bishop takes on e4, queen takes on e4, and then knight gets in, and this looks very dangerous because knight to f2 is on the cards. Tal played bishop to c4, checking the king, king goes up, and then queen takes on b2 with attacking the bishop, and it looks like there is double threat because threatening to play knight to f2 and also attacking the bishop. And now how to defend? It looks like Mikhail Tal is in trouble against the nine times Hungarian chess champion. Well, I'm going to show you which move is not going to work. There is a move uh, which is very tempting. So if bishop to c3, so as you can see, this is attacking the queen. So after defending the queen, uh, maybe defending on f2 comes to mind. But in this position, black has this very strong move, checking the king. After moving the king, we can simply capture the bishop. So basically moving the king is not an option. So blocking with the bishop is a must. And then defending the queen, but queen to b6 with supporting the knight, as you can see. So this looks very, very dangerous. And also the bishop is pinned. So for a human's perspective, actually defending this position is pretty difficult. But the engine says actually white is fine, even in this variation. So of course, Mikhail Tal didn't want this. After queen takes on b2, actually in this position, white has a very strong move. Can you see that move? It is white to move. Mikhail Tal, as a very aggressive attacking chess player, answers his opponent with attack. He played bishop takes on f7. This was the answer of Mikhail Tal. The answer against queen takes bishop or knight to f2. So this is also defending the bishop, opening, as you can see, opening the queen, checking the king and also attacking the rook. So what else? If not capturing the bishop, simply capturing the rook is very good. So king takes on f7, but then check. So both the light diagonal and also the dark diagonal is covered. And this is the only defense, but Mikhail Tal played a very beautiful check, queen to b7. And where is the king going? If moving the king up, then capturing the rook with check. So desperately blocking with the rook. Let's demonstrate that on the board. Let's say king goes up, and then we can capture the rook with check. And this looks awful, basically. So check, rook to e7, Tal captured the rook. Checking the king, and where is the king going? Only move, and then simply defending the bishop, queen goes back, and why not knight to f2? Well, in this position, Zabo, because of having a very difficult position, he sacrificed his knight for extricating himself. Actually, the queen is trapped. <laughs> that was the idea. So in this position, if knight to f2 without paying too much attention, then rook to b1 and the queen is trapped. It's all over. So okay, so this is why capturing on e5 and then capturing the knight and then saving the queen, but basically white is a rook up. And on the other hand, black has a passer, a black has a pass pawn, but that's not going to do much. Tal pushed the pawn, a5 and attacking the rook, so defending and attacking the bishop, attacking the queen, checking, checking, and Mikhail Tal is blocking with the queen, he is leaving the bishop, so queen to c8, actually in this position, if exchanging, the end game is going to be a completely losing end game, as you can see, white has a pass pawn and two rooks, and this is losing, 
So a white has the exchange against the bishop, also one extra pawn, and that pawn is a passed pawn. So this endgame is basically piece of cake for Mikhail Tell. Okay, so this is why Zabo didn't want to exchange the queens. And then in this position, Mikhail Tell played another very beautiful move. What would you do? If in this position, if white can infiltrate on the seventh rank, that's going to be very dangerous for black. Can you do the, can you do that? Do you think that rook to d7 is possible? It is rook to d7 by Mikhail Tal, a beautiful move. Every move is beautiful. So in this position, a Zabo plate capturing the bishop. If capturing the rook, that is going to deflect the queen and then check. Capturing the rook and there is going to be force checkmate or something. Or if king goes down, simply rook check, uh, winning the queen. And that's all over, of course. White has the queen against the bishop. Uh, so, okay, uh, this is why not capturing the rook. A takes on b4, but then white has some zigzag checks. Check, check. And after this move, Zabo resigned. Because of this continuation, actually... He resigned earlier, I believe, checking the king, and black resigned. Anyway, it doesn't matter too much, I guess. So the possible continuation, hiding the king, check, check, checkmate. There is no defense, and that's all over. This is what happens when you attack the most incredible attacker of all times. Uh, very confidently, you have to be careful when you are playing against Mikhail Tal. Tal was a very dangerous chess player. And one of the most aggressive, one of the most amazing attackers of all times. They call Tal the magician from Riga. And I hope you have enjoyed watching this chess game and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.